Humanity has lived on Earth for an estimated 300,000 years. While there are many people that debate this issue, this is what most scientists agree on. It's not until a few hundred years ago, however, that humans began to record and map out the Earth completely. While many people think that the Earth has been fully recorded, however, there are others that think we are missing a very important section of the Earth, and that is what lies under the surface. The hollow Earth theory is an idea that pretty much claims that the Earth is somewhat hollow with massive cave structures found under the crust. So this is Sinister Stories, and join me as we dive into one of the most interesting theories about the planet that we live on. The idea of a hollow earth can be dated back to many ancient civilizations and religions. Examples would be the Greek underworld, the Christian hell, or the Jewish shoal. Another very popular example is the Tibetan Buddhist belief of a city located under the earth called Shambhala. This theory has a few versions however, so let's explain them. One version is that the earth is completely hollow, almost like a Death Star from Star Wars. Inside the earth however, is a civilization of people that tend to lurk in the shadows to keep themselves from being known to us humans. Who the civilization is, however, tends to change depending on who you ask. Some people think that there are extraterrestrials who have made a bunker inside the Earth as their home base in order to study us, while others think that people inside the Earth are actually humans that are more advanced than us. The other version of the theory is that the Earth is not completely hollow, but is in fact filled with many subterranean cave systems. Now it has been proven by science that some cave systems are in fact so big that they have their own small ecosystem. This fact tends to add more to the theory, stating that something could actually be living under the earth. Now it's funny because the hollow earth theory actually ties into another theory, and that is the theory of where flying saucers come from. Now many people that believe in the hollow earth theory actually believe that all the UFOs that are spotted across the world are actually from the civilization that lives under us. People think that there are actually several exits to the underground world and they are located in different spots around the earth, and that is why UFO sightings are more active in some places than others. Another thing that links these UFOs to humanity is that some UFOs have actually been seen with swastikas on them. Now before the swastika was actually tainted by the Nazi party, it was actually a religious symbol that dates back to thousands of years. So many people think that this civilization that could be under the earth actually lived alongside humans at some point. And that at some point later down the timeline they decided to go live under the earth but they took some of our symbols and some of our ideologies with them. Now many people wonder that if other humans lived under the earth, how could they be more advanced than us if they are humans as well? Well the first thing we have to consider is that there have been many catastrophes that happened on top of the earth's crust. Many scientists think that the human race has been almost wiped out about 2-3 to three times in our history, and some scientists would even say 4-6 to six times. This means that at several points in our history, humanity has had to almost completely restart their civilization due to these catastrophes. If this is the case, imagine how far humanity would be now if we did not have to restart ourselves several times over. This could explain how an inner earth civilization could be way more advanced than us. Maybe they never went through the floods, asteroid impacts, or anything like that. Another example of this is given by Neil deGrasse Tyson, although not directly, when he claims that the mixing of the European people and the natives in North America is one of the most important, if not the most important event in recent human history. Tyson believes that if Christopher Columbus did not in fact mix the European race and the Native Americans at that moment in time, evolution could have taken its toll and created two completely different versions of humans over time. One of the groups would be located in the west, like North America and South America, and the other would be located in the east, like Europe and Asia, and even Africa. Given enough time, if there were actually humans that migrated under the earth thousands of years ago, evolution could have taken them on a completely different path than those of us on the surface. For example, they could be more adapted to the darkness by allowing their eyes to take in more light. Their legs and their feet could also be much stronger and harder in order to help them walk on the subterranean surface of rocks. The fact that they would have the knowledge of early humans before going into the earth, as well as the non-interrupted growth as a civilization, could mean that they might have progressed at a much faster rate than those of us on the surface. Now many people think that inside the earth you can find a very small sun which gives all the needed light and nutrients to the people that live inside of it. Many people also think that inside the earth is a very famous city called Agartha which has a king. Many people who have been abducted by aliens actually claim that the aliens themselves claim to be from inside the earth in a city called Agartha and that the king of Agartha has actually told them to go and tell these people to stop working on nuclear weapons. According to many of these abductees, the king is very worried about what the people on the surface might do and that they could ruin the earth for everybody including the people under the ground. Now many people think that the main exit and entrance to this hollow earth can actually be found in Antarctica or either of the north or south poles. Many people think this because Antarctica and the poles seem to be blurred out on Google Maps. 
Not only that, but most governments have a strict rule over flying over Antarctica. Most governments also have a large number of military presence in Antarctica for no known reason. Now before we get into witness accounts and stories, we're going to have to go over a very strange theory that is much lesser known but is still important to this whole idea. And that is the convex earth theory. Now this theory is kind of trippy and it pretty much claims that we are already living inside of an earth. So pretty much all the sky in the observable universe we see is already inside of a world. So we technically are the subterranean creatures. Now there isn't that much to this theory but I did want to show it to you guys just in case you guys did want to look more into that on your own. Or maybe I'll make a video on that in the future, who knows. So now let's get into some accounts of real world testimonies or hollow earth related stories. One famous story is that of the pilot Richard E. Byrd who took several trips to the South and North Pole in the 1930s and 40s. According to Byrd's private journal, whenever he went to the North Pole, he saw a lot of luscious green land filled with grass and trees and there should be none there since Antarctica is mostly ice. It's when he went to the South Pole, however, that things got a lot more interesting. According to Byrd's journal, he actually flew into a giant hole in the South Pole and inside of the hole he found a civilization and a giant sun in the air. According to Byrd, they had a lot of flying equipment that was way more advanced than anything we had at the time. And while he was flying around looking at the city, he was hit by a beam that led him back outside the hole before the hole closed. Now many people think that Bird would have no reason to come up with a story like this since he was already a very prestigious pilot. Usually whenever people make it in a certain field, they tend to stray away from these type of topics since they can really tarnish your reputation. This may be why Bird wrote this down in his journal but he didn't come out with it publicly. Now many people claim that this is evidence of a hollow earth but what other people think is that the hole he went into is actually a wormhole that leads to another planet. And many people think that the species that lives inside this wormhole could actually be aliens and maybe even the aliens that created us. If the aliens did create us and made us look like them then they would look just like us and can pretty much blend into our civilization in order to study us. Another famous example of the hollow earth would be the green children of Woolpit, a story that happened back in the 12th century. According to the story, back in the 12th century, there were two children that showed up at a house. It was a boy and a girl. Now, they both looked very sick, so they gave them something to eat, but the only thing they would eat were raw beans. And the weird thing about them was that their skin was not pale or peach like a normal person, but it was actually green. Now, they did not really know how to speak, so the people there tried to teach them. Unfortunately, the boy got really sick and died soon after his appearance. His sister, however, managed to live a semi-normal life and even managed to learn a little bit of English. According to them, the place where they're from is a subterranean civilization under the earth inhabited by green people. And they said that their world always looks like it's in twilight, so it always looks like it's about 6 or 7 p.m. in their area. They said that one day they chased one of their cows into a cave that got away and they went too deep into the cave and eventually ended up on earth. So what do you guys think? Do you guys think that the hollow earth theory is actually proven by these stories or do you think these stories are actually fake? This has been Sunday's Stories and thank you so much for joining me throughout this entire video. If you stayed till the end, I really appreciate it and don't forget to drop a like and also a comment to see if you want me to cover any other topics. Until next time guys, make sure to wash your hands and make sure you stay safe and I will see you all in the next video.